afternoon 2 to 30 to 4 o'clock on Monday. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is the title of my workshop. Um, uh, it consists of two parts. Uh, we'll have a little break halfway or hopefully, you know, without before too long. And um, uh, yeah, and then like I said, I'll, I will be recording this one, putting it online. And um, uh, as you may have seen already, I have quite a few slides and I'll, I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Um, partly because it's really quite easy. Now, nothing I'm saying is going to be complicated in any way. It's really simple. It may look a little bit complicated if you don't know it, but it's easy to figure out if you just have a look at it, check out a program or any, anything at all. And you can also ask me either you know, after the presentation or even during if you want to, or uh, you know, at any point. Um, so, but I figured you know, I'd rather squeeze in some more stuff there. Things you, half of this you might already know, right? And some of things might be, so I thought I would you know, put in more more points, more uh, slides. So that, that's a trade-off, I guess. So, um, all right. I thought I would start with some really practical shortcuts. Uh, on Windows, the, the command symbol there, the, the little funny Bowen pie, I think, or Bowen knot or something, uh, is the equivalent of um, control. Control, I think, on Windows. So what this one does? Uh, so command um, this one, next program, command tab. It switches between program like this. Uh, and you can even go back, shift tab, uh, back to my presentation. Where is that? Uh, in on Mac, you can also. To switch between windows and a program, you can use uh, uh, this one here, next window. So, for instance, if I have several windows in Chrome, I can switch between them like this. Uh, on Mac, you also have a very nice full shortcut, uh, Command Space, which gives you the spotlight, and you can search for things. It's a very good, it's a good way for searching, but it's also good starting applications. If you have a program you want to start, uh, you can simply start typing, and it will it'll automatically search. So, like if you want to open a dictionary, D I, and it immediately gives you the application right away. Enter, and voila, there's your dictionary. Um, settings is also command comma in all Mac programs. I don't think there's a Windows equivalent. I don't know. Uh, the Finder in Mac has um, a couple of nice things. It has the space to preview. Let's see here, so you can um, click space, and you get a preview on a file, and you can do up and move your arrows up and down, and you can look preview different um, different things. So, for instance, if you downloaded, say, some articles, they look terrible, right? You can click space. And you can find, oh, which article am I looking for? Oh, it's this one, right? All I'm doing is, I, I'm in Finder. I am on this particular file, like this is highlighted, right? And I click space. And then if I want to go, like say you want to flip up and down within this uh, folder, uh, which is the download catalog the folder. You just move the arrows up and down. And if you see in the background, you see that I'm going down. And you can see all of these are my private uh, files that you should. Um, this space in, in, in the folder. I don't know about a Windows equivalent. There might be one. Uh, side menu. Uh, I think Windows, I'm not sure about Windows 8, but I think Windows 7 and below has something similar. Uh, so I don't know if you can let this make any sense, but I'm basically moving a folder. You can order a file. I usually move folders to the uh, sidebar. It's really practical, actually. Uh, so like here, you see, I already have a hand, quite a few. These are all PhD stuff that I'm working on, important folders that I use. So let's say I want to throw in bibliographies and references. I drag it onto the, the side here, put it, for instance, here, and I get like a shortcut to this folder. And apart from being like a quick way of accessing this particular folder, it's also a very quick way of dropping stuff there. 
like if you you know say you go to the download uh, and you wanna throw throw your new uh, downloads into another folder like articles or uh, you know things to read or whatever, you can easily drag them over here to you know bibliographies or articles wherever you want to pull them, right? So that's a good way to think to use these. Um, you see the, the the menu in this way. Yeah. Yeah. Older. I have, as you see, of course now I, I am not taking these courses anymore, 5.7, 5.8, but I used to have them in the menu when I was taking these courses last year. So then I had all the, because these are, I access them every single day almost, right? You, you know, you read an article, you check something out, you start working on something, you know, and you read all the time, right? So now I, I, I uh, no, removed them because I, I take them on these courses. I only have one course left, which I'm basically wrapping up now, this is 5.8, and we'll see it, uh, uh, down here, right? So this one I'm still keeping. Uh, and at Windows, I believe, uh, I think Windows has some similar system. You can, I'm not sure exactly how you would do it, but but the principle remains the same, right? Uh, another thing is, is maybe a little bit on the nerdy side, but if you you never know when it comes in handy, you can copy. So basically, from uh, Finder, you can copy a list of um, documents over to a text editor and you can get the file names themselves so i'll show you uh so let's say these the names of these uh, files and folders you can uh, copy paste so command c uh, go over to the text document command v and now you have the text of these you know like if you have a list of 100 uh, her, you know 100 articles or you know for some reason you want to do something in all your folders I've done only done a couple of times, uh, maybe like a long list of articles or something, or you want to show someone. You know, it's not the most useful tip in the book, but uh, you never know when it comes in handy. Oh, you suppose like if you want to. Okay. For instance, yeah. Or if you, for instance, let's say you're working on a, on a project and you have like 30 articles and you want to like, kind of sort them or put them in category, kind of throw them around on, uh, in a Word document. You know, oh, this, these five articles talk about early literacy. These talk about, uh, you know, identity crisis. And like, you can kind of play around with the titles if you have sorted them. Let's say you have uh, your articles are called a name by title. You can, you can do this. I, I've only done it a couple of times myself, but it's one of those things you, you never know when you need it. Right? So, um... Uh, this is a program that I'm not aware of uh, equivalent to a Mac. It's um, it's it's quite powerful, but maybe slightly complicated to use, or at least not not quite as easy as most other programs. What it does, it, it executes a series of operations. So you can do, and typically I use it for doing one fairly simple operation with a lot of files. Um, so I'm not going to get into it here, but there are lots of options, like particularly PDFs, because that's what I deal with as a scholar, right? I use deal with the PDFs. So you can turn into images, you can extract text, you can uh, extract metadata, you can combine PDFs, you can do a lot of things with PDFs, you can do things with photos, emails, documents, all kinds of things. So you would have to, if you want to use it, you might want to kind of look into it a little bit to see what, uh, what options are. Um, but I've, uh, I mainly use it for switching between images and PDF because occasionally you need to do that for optical character recognition or once in a while. Um, dictionary. Uh, this is native to Mac. There are, of course, a million dictionaries out there. Um, so, but I, and I think a lot of people don't even know that it's uh, present in, in Mac. So if you find it, start typing dictionary. The dictionary or the search? Pardon me? Do I like what? Do you like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. I, 
I found two or three words uh, that are not in the dictionary. Was it uh, agri agrione? What was the word? Yeah. Isagoric. A completely obscure word of some right. Greek uh, derivation that you know has to do with some democratic. You know, there are I found a couple of words that are not there, but then um, then you just Google them and find them anyway. <laughs> no, but I. Uh, and that's uh, yeah. So this is actually uh, I use command one and two to switch between a dictionary and thesaurus. Uh, I actually use this maybe just as much as a thesaurus. Like if you look up a word like argue, you can, we argue all the time. We make a point to argue something. I use this today for some other word. Uh, writing something, and I was argue with some other. Word. And you can immediately find a lot of other words. Often you know these, right? It's not that you don't know. It's more like you want to say something, maybe maybe you just want a synonym. Sometimes you want a word that's a bit more precise or a little bit different. Or if you already said, you know, argue, argue, insist, then you maybe you want to say claim, allege, you know, you want to use another word. Yeah. Exactly. And the thing, uh, the thing also dictionary, yes, of course, you can always go online or use a paper dictionary, but the, the point with, with the dictionary, I mean, almost everything I'm Thing here is it's all it's all about make, making and if we cover this, making it accessible. Like if I can do if I can look up a, a synonym within like one and a half seconds or less, then I'm happy. If it takes me five seconds, I'm not going to do it. I, I can't spend time looking up. So if you have this in here, like you go, you know, you're writing a word document, and you go between like this, and you okay argue, um find you know you, you go between words like this then you can do it in a couple of, in less than a couple of seconds yeah command tab command tab and it always goes within the last one so you just do this you do i do chup, chup, chup. you can see i don't even i don't need to wait for this one i just command tab you hold command down and you press tab yeah, exactly. And I do that a lot. I do that with a uh, with a PDF and Word. You know, you write something or yeah. you know take so notes. Because I'm, I'm, I'm actually what I do is I use the key that has yeah. And it may sound trivial to to say one or two seconds, but if you do this a hundred times a day, and I do it probably a thousand times a day sometimes, it really makes a difference. And it's all about you know making making things more more of flow. You know, you don't need to stop your thought process, so to speak. You just move on, right? To me, uh, at least that's very important to me uh, to to have things smooth. And I always avoid the mouse whenever I can do something with keyboards, a lot faster, and they're more efficient. It's just Always use the mouse. Well, I I can I probably know, or maybe I use fifty shortcuts in different programs, and I bet there are five hundred out there that you could be using, right? And and most people use maybe between five and ten. That's I mean, this is just my guess. Right? So uh, yeah, the dictionary, lots of options for Windows. I you you know it's more of your personal preference what what you want to use or how you want to do it, or use online ones also of course. But I prefer having them. You know, easily accessible and you know within shortcuts. Audacity is a program uh, which is excellent for recording. It's the, the recording program par excellence uh, for interviews or uh, you know meetings or whatever, what have you. Uh, looks like this. No, actually, I didn't have a. <laughs> uh, it looks like this. Very simple to use. Uh, I just want to highlight two things. You can very easily remove noise and you can amplify sound. Sometimes when you record uh, the, the person speaking, you know it sounds like he's kind of whispering. Da, 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 happen, and you're like, you know, I have to turn the volume up to max, and it's still a little bit uh, vague sometimes. Uh, very easy to do in Audacity, either a segment or the whole um, thing, or you remove clicks also. You know, like sometimes um, if there's like a knock or something, you will really hear it well. Um, I'll just show you, or not show you, um, give an example. Illustrate background noise and how I can hear it. And 
big potential here that is sounding better than I remember. This is a recording in Illustrate background noise and how it can be reviewed. And then big potential here that is sounding better than I remember. I don't know if you notice that much of a difference, but I think these speakers kind of nullify a bit of my point. If you listen to it carefully with these headphones or like, you know, without the uh, humming from the back there and with proper speakers, you will really notice a difference there. Um, <clears throat> sometimes back noise is not a problem at all. I us usually it isn't, but uh, all the time it is. Very easy to do. I'm not going to explain it now because it will take me 20 seconds and that's a bit more than I have. Uh, <laughs> Bit of a joke, but but it's um it's easy to do. Um, I can show you if you want to you know look into that or you can check it out. Yeah, uh, yeah, I couldn't mention that. All the programs I talk about are free. I specifically avoided uh, except Microsoft Word, but that's you know you know everyone uses it anyway. Anyway, uh, all the other programs are free. Um, and some of these are native to Mac. Uh, the ones that I have a Mac symbol tend to. Uh, this is uh, Evernote. Uh, many of you know it. Um. You know, good for taking notes. Um, they have online backup, which is a pretty good thing. Uh, that's something. Actually, I don't have a slide for that, but I should kind of stress that point. That if you're not, if you don't have an automatic syncing uh, or online backup with your text files, so like Word documents or other important files, I would maybe even include PDFs. Do it. Uh, Dropbox or Google Scholar, uh, Google Drive. You really should set that up because if even losing one day's uh, worth of work is killer, right? I mean, you know, five minutes to me is like, you know, oh, I'm gonna quit my PhD. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you automatically sync it so that you set up a folder on your computer. In my, uh, it's called, uh, at least by default, it's called Google Drive. You might be able to rename it, I just haven't bothered. Okay. And it will automatically sync. If you see, uh, my PHP folder is not synced, but everyone else is, all these green dots. I think I kind of exceeded my uh, limit. Uh, so all these are synced except, I can't see any of that. No, this one is not synced. International Student Support. Oops, that's this, uh, <laughs> this job. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, you just drag it over. So you have a Google Drive here, and you drag it over like this. It should be somewhere if you have installed it. You're, even if you have a Google account, you do not automatically have Google Drive. It's a program that you install on your computer. And then it will tell, it will go, you will just go through all the steps, accept, 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 you know, and then install it. And, uh, and then you get it there in your document folder or in your, um, in your hard disk. And then you can, you know, keep it on the menu if you like. And it will sync all your, you know, I keep all your Word documents there. Uh, consider keeping PDFs and other important documents there. Because you need to install Google Drive. You, ne you need to go to um, uh, Google or drive.google.com or whatever it is, and then you just go through the process and install the, download and install the program, and you're good to go. Yeah. The, the syncing is automatic. It syncs every five minutes or every how often you want. I think uh, I think you can set it to sync even every minute if you want. I think there are some settings, and you can you, it will do that. Yeah. Hmm. Evernote also syncs automatically every. I'm sure you can set it to every minute, every five minutes, whatever it is, right? Um, for taking notes and stuff. Um, but it has, you know, it has a different format. You can't do the same formatting as Word. Like if you're writing a bigger document, of course, it's a whole different process. But more for notes and stuff, it's popular. Uh, an alternative, which uh, not as popular, but some people swear by it, is called Notational Velocity, Mac only. 
it's a bit simpler just to give you a sense of how they are different a bit more basic but some people prefer that right no no much no no fuss don't worry about formatting just the basics but here you have more options and you know more um more of that <laughs> what what you can do i i don't actually have a or i don't use should i say my my uh, phone for that but um i actually just got that question two days ago or i didn't get it but someone else got it in the workshop uh, what you one thing you can do probably if you're online is to use Google Docs and then that will automatically save you know your docs in the cloud. You can access it, but to to sync with your computer, you would have to use some other program, and I can't really tell you. And but there, when someone else was asked that question, I got the impression that it wasn't like a super obvious. I know there are options out there, but it wasn't like why oh you, everyone uses this. That was not the takeaway from that, so you, you can check it out. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know very much about uh, uh, tablets and, and phones and how these can be synced and stuff. But, um, that, that's, a, that's a whole session in its own right, I think. And it's also more. Uh, Picasa is another program. Um, not so much for academic stuff, but uh, it's good for um, basic manipulation of pictures uh, and images, of course. Uh, batch edit means that you can do one simple operation with a lot of pictures. So you can, like, like you rotate lots of pictures one way. Uh, or uh, you know, do one kind of simple operation. Uh, I use it also for organizing my personal pictures more so than for academic. It's a very popular program. Um, my preferred uh, PDF reader is called Skim, an open source uh, Mac uh, program. Uh, what it does is it highlights and it so you can highlight text, uh, underline, etc., and you can annotate so you can write things on the on it itself, like this. So you can you know, highlight, underline, write, do notes. Uh, the Windows equivalents, I, I haven't checked it out, but uh, I read up online and someone suggested, or PDF Exchange Viewer was like the, compared to the equivalent. But I'm sure there are other programs also that do highlights. It's not exactly a very unique thing. Um, Are you using Skim? Yeah, yeah. But probably, well, in, I know Skim, and I wouldn't be surprised if you have a similar. Um, uh, if, yeah. Well, in in Skim, it will look like this. Uh, so right, I can um, let me show you the bar. So up here. You have five, op five, five options, right? Uh, if I click the A, I highlight for copying, Command C, and I paste it over here. If I click on this one, actually, I should have to hold it down and click highlight. I highlight. So I'm sure there will be some similar way of choosing in any other PDF reader, right? I mean, but the, the, the shortcuts will probably be different, but the principle will be exactly the same. I'm coming to that. Thank you. So um, going back, um, one, I mean, I think the highlighting thing is pretty common. A lot of uh, PDF readers will do that. But not all of them will do this. Um, they will not, uh, like this is the stuff that I highlighted, right? And this is also, this can also be exported to a text document. This is the RTS document, uh, to a text document. 
So this page, this um, text here, you know, this buddy's prim primary aim was is copied over there to a text document that I can edit. I can copy, paste, I can, you know, move it around. I can do whatever I want with it. So um, I don't use it a lot myself. Uh, I kind of have a, actually have a kind of a system for doing it automatically, but I wouldn't usually do that. But you never know. Or some people do want to work in that way, right? Um, and it's quite simple. You can get like a, you can also give you like a gist, let's say you highlight, you know, five, ten percent of an article. And that can work as a gist. Like if you want to reread it, you can also just export it and read those notes. If you want to do that. I, when I, what I usually do when I reread an article, I go back and I just read the highlights in the original PDF as opposed to using my exported notes. So then I get the context and I get the chance to look up and down. But anyway, and now you know, now that you know, or you know, if you know about this, then you can choose, right? Like this one. <laughs> this is like a sticky note where you have yeah. like you know one or two words or little things. But if you want like an elaborate note, then you have this option. And and this is in Skim. Other PDF readers will have similar, or some will have similar uh, options. Um, this is actually scheme is actually made for academic use. Uh, was developed for that. Pre preview is the default PDF reader in uh, in for Mac. Um, you know, I go back about reader is the it's not native to to Windows, but it's the most commonly used one probably. Uh, it's older thing. Um, it has a lot of functions, and I think not everyone knows about these. Um, and and again, other PDF readers will have similar functions, but you would have to check it out because. I bet there are thousand PDF readers out there. There's so many, uh, and they will have different functions. Some will be, you know, lots of online more functions. Some will be, you know, simple. Some will be this and that. Uh, so, one thing that I use sometimes, especially for if I have, uh, like, if you download some documents and you get like separate pages, you can call, you can merge them into one document very easily. Just quickly illustrate that in preview. So here I have two documents. I put them side by side so that you can easily, you know, have them work on two at the same time. So let's say I want to merge both these two documents into one. I can just mark all, Command A, right, and drag them to the beginning of this document before one, or at the end before after twenty one, right? So I just drag them over here, and voila, you have. You know, one document. And similarly, you can delete the pages, uh, etc. Right. So this one just went from being 21 pages to being 40, 35. I'll show you later how that can be a little bit useful, actually, uh, or, you know, one example of that. Um, yeah, and you can move pages around, you can delete, etc. Right? You can uh, rotate, and that is yeah, a lot of possibilities. Um, uh, preview is also good for turning images into PDF and like uh, working around that way. Um, speaking of PDFs, uh, I just came to th think of a thing that I haven't put in my slideshow. Um, a lot of people ask, oh, how you know, you have a PDF. And you want to extract the images from that. Right? You have a PDF, uh, like um, like this one, and you want to take like this. Uh, where is it even now? Like this, this one. This is an image, and you want to take it and put it somewhere else. What do you do? Right. The short answer is that, or the easy way is to make a screenshot. In Mac, it's a uh, Command Shift. Uh, four for uh, this selection and command shift three for the whole screen. In Windows, it's something with a screen. I don't, I don't remember the shortcut, but there's a shortcut. You can just Google it, you'll find it immediately. Uh, I just took an image of this little uh, image or took a picture of the image. In Mac, the, all of these will get to my desktop. 
if I search by, search by date, I'll find it here. And now I can put it, you know, in my presentation or wherever I want to put it. That's the easy way. And like, the, you know, the shoe, what is word even like the fast and simple way. Uh, in, in Windows, I think the default is when you take a screenshot, it's kind of saved in your, um, like when you, you can paste it, you, you know, command V and it will paste it into a Word document or into a picture, you know, editor, whatever. Uh, whereas in Mac, it will do the default is to save it on the desktop. So if you kind of do it on Mac and on Windows and you don't find it, it's because it's it's in the air and it needs to be pasted. Uh, that's the easy way. Uh, not so accurate, but you know, and works often. Uh, the other way is the complicated way, uh, is to, I've only done it like once or twice. Um, basically, to use Open uh, Open Office and a certain plugin for PDFs, and then and then you can actually edit the PDF. It's the only program, open source program that I've found that actually allows you to do that. And it, I think it's really sometimes you really really need it. Like I had this picture book that was you know all free. I was allowed to use it, but I, the the pictures were embedded in the in the PDF, so I couldn't take them out. I wanted to re, you know, remix it and translate it and stuff. So I managed to do it uh, with Open uh, Open Office and a certain plugin. Um, so there are ways, but it's not it's nothing you know easy. Or I don't know, it's not it's not as easy as it should be, I guess. As you you know, it's logic. Um, Flux is a program for um, uh, it. Only basically does one thing. It changes the background light at night. So after after sunset, it's kind of funny when when the sun goes down, you kind of the screen starts kind of reddening, you know. Uh, it's supposed to be good for your eyes, and um, yeah, I don't know. I, it takes a bit a little bit of time to get used to maybe, but I just started using it now because I was good reading up for this presentation. I heard about it before, but you know, I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Might as well try it out. Um, this is an approximation of uh, what it looks like because I couldn't get a screenshot of the flux because it's just a background light. This is a sepia, but it gives you some sense of the difference. And it's only at night. So it's a little bit reddish. This is more pinkish, actually. This is more sepia, more brownish. But just to get a, get a sense of it. Uh, VLC, um, I can assume many of you are familiar with this one. Very popular uh, video uh, media player. One thing that not everyone is aware of or has thought about is the playback function. Uh, basically, it allows you to play back uh, any any uh, video file, you know, audio or or uh, you know, uh, at, at a lower, faster or slower rate. It can be very. It can. I, I sometimes use it for uh, foreign languages. Like I'm listening to to a German audiobook, and they speak too quickly. I'm like, oh. So I, I usually go down to maybe 0 0.84, sorry, 0 0.85, 0 0.90, and I can more or less follow them. Um, exactly. Transcriptions, uh, sometimes you want to go slower, sometimes you want to go faster. Like, let's say, let's say you want to listen to the, my presentation again and just look for some, oh, what, what did you say about the, you know, the playback function now? And, and you don't want to listen to the whole thing. You can just uh, you know, speed up to the fastest and just kind of get a sense of, we're, you know, what are we talking about now? And then you know, go faster, and then you can find it easily. Um, or even if you're listening to like a long speech or any, any basically any kind of spoken, you know, recording, uh, you can easily put it at maybe 1.5, one, even even up to two, and still get it, uh, depending a bit on how articulate the speaker is and how tuned you are to the voice. And you know, like. Say you want to listen to a two-hour interview or two-hour recording, you can do it in an hour, an hour and a half, and you know, save some time if you want to do that. Uh, I'm not familiar with any other programs doing that. So just to quickly illustrate this, uh, so let's put this at point two. Is it a little bit much? This is recording in the great background and how to use it. And it's potentially when you're like sounding better, but um these um what is it in micro uh, these uh, speakers are not the best. So it sounds a little bit better if you have like proper speakers. Um but you get a you get a sense of it, right? If 
can play around with it if you if you ever want to do that. Uh, let me ask you, how many here is using either Sotero or another reference manager? Yeah, Refrex. You're using Refrex, Sotero, Sotero? Oh. Manley? And the three of you are not using anything. Uh, I would, you know, this is a little bit in jest, but uh, basically the higher up the order in the system, the more important it is to have, keep track of your notes, or keep, sorry, keep track of your references. So for me as a PhD student, I consider it indispensable. Um, you know, MS students, and you can always get around things, right? But uh, basically, the more into the academics you are, or, or maybe also your ambitions about continuing, the more important this would be. Work, there are workshops on, on these all the time. Unfortunately, for some rather annoying reason, if I may say so, they're not, the library is very supportive of Mendeley, uh, which is a commercial product that the library has paid a lot of money to get support for for students, uh, but only as long as they are students. So they kind of want to suck you in and, you know, let you, you know, not pay as a student, but then, you know, you kind of feel compelled to pay when you leave, right? Anyway, that's the library's policy. So there is uh, free and the biggest, um, the biggest free one. Uh, I'm not going to get into it because it's a bit too complicated and, you know, you, it, you can teach this your, yourself. It's not complicated at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, the library has lots of support for these things, but I, you know, I, I only I actually use another one. I don't even use Sotero mainly, but these things are pretty self-explanatory. You can go to a workshop, you know, definitely you can check it out for yourself. Um, but I do advise that you use one if you're not using one, especially if you're a PhD. Um, so program shortcuts. Uh, Chrome, the most popular browser in um, in this part of the world. Uh, there are lots of things you can do with settings and nice little things there. I just thought I would highlight a couple of uh, shortcuts. After all, you know, Chrome is a program I use most of the time. Chrome and, and also Word, I guess. Uh, so, um, right. You can use Command or in, in Windows Control and then switch between the tabs by pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Like this. And Command 9 will take you to the last uh, regardless of how many you have. Command 9 is always the last. Or whether it's 20 or 4, it's always the last. Plus and minus, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, and these are also similar to other, with other browsers, at least uh, uh, Firefox also has some similar shortcuts and features. Zero, Command 0 will bring you back to the default zoom. Uh, you can also change that in settings, whatever, if you want. Like I prefer bigger text than what the default is. So I have like 150% zoom is like my default. Um, uh, so Command T opens a new tab. You can uh, Google something here, meaning of life. In Command T, you will close this one. You don't want to know the meaning of life. Know it already. Command Shift T. This is a really nice uh, shortcut, uh, I think, because if you close a tab, you can in one shortcut you can bring it back up. And I do that all the time. You know I. I'm too quick, and then I, you know, throw things around, or you accidentally, you know, uh, close it, and or maybe you closed it like three tabs ago, and you want to wait a minute. I searched, I found something on meaning of life. Wait a minute, that is important. And then you know, you did that five minutes ago. You can either go to history. Um, you don't even need this one. Uh, Command Y, and then you can find it here, or you can just, you know, reopen the last couple of tabs. Just you know, Command Shift T, 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 and then this is what you get. You get the last tabs you close. Hope this is not too fast. Uh, these are some of the shortcuts there. Uh, Command L, go to the brow go to the URL uh, bar of the field. Um, so uh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word, lots of shortcuts. Uh, by the way, perhaps the best way of learning shortcuts. And I do advise you to learn them you know, generally. Which ones you learn is a bit you know, personal preference. And most of the programs will have them up here. You know, um, uh, Command Z, Y, X, all these. You know the basic of them. 
ones, I'm sure. Um, one of my favorites is this one, pa uh, paste and match formatting. Uh, what it does is, uh, like if I'm, I copy something, Command C, right? Uh, now if I paste it here, Command V, I get this. Do I want that? No, of course not. I never want that. <laughs> Doesn't Word understand that? I never want that. I always want Command Option V, uh, Command Option Shift V. This is what I want, right? I want 99% 99, 99 of the time when I paste, I want to uh, uh, paste and match formatting. This one. Uh, I, I, ever since I learned that one, it was quite recent. I use it like every day. Always use this one. This is just. I just not you know I don't have to bother about reformatting, changing the size. No, I'm writing if I'm writing in in, in um, Times New Roman, I don't want Arial in the middle of my text, right? Symbol. Yeah. Option shift uh, command. This is control. And these only apply to 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 Mac. Except the middle one. I think Windows they have some similar other symbols for their um, keys. I, I wouldn't know the shortcuts, but it would be, you know, if something is different in Windows, it's usually it's a little bit different. It's not hard to figure out the difference. So uh, yeah, another thing I use <laughs> uh, Command Option R and T gives me this is R. It hides the this this one. I'm a little bit obsessed with having a lot of space in our and you know future directions in our right. I always do this, and then I adjust the window to make it big. So I don't know. I like having my space, you know, in our writing fewer distractions. You can also go full screen, of course, or is that Command Shift F or something? Um, full screen. Uh, there you go. Um, control like this. But I don't know. I like having some. Anyways, personal preference. Ex escape to, to leave it. Um, yeah, it's a good question, actually. I think, um, basically, I, I've, been, I've been thinking about that, actually. I would like that for any program to have it. You can do this to show, uh, to, you know, whatever windows you have open. On Mac, um, but of course, it does, it's not what you want, right? You want to be able to work on them at the same time. One thing you can do, which doesn't really work very well, is to have to zoom in so that you actually get um, two pages like this. But then you're just zooming, right? I know, I know. There should there should actually be there should be a function. But to the best of my knowledge, there isn't one where you, in any program, can get like two documents, just line them up next to each other. I would kill for that, but I haven't seen any. I don't know any. Let me know if you come across it. Uh, um, back to the PowerPoint here. Um, yeah, so, you know, get more space with these nice little shortcuts. There are shortcuts for everything in Word, you know, uh, opening like any of these little help windows, etc. Lots of shortcuts. Uh, uh, also, the, in Word, I also want to highlight some advanced uh, search and replace that I think most people don't uh, know about. I use it not often, but when I use it, I really feel it's powerful. You know, when I use it, I really like, ah, oh, I'm glad I know this. There are actually there are some pretty strong search functions also, but I'm only get into some of the basics. Um, when you want to search for something, you know, if you want to search for a word, you just type the word. But if you want to search for something more general, like a character, paragraph mark, you have to use a special search uh, uh, term or whatever it's called. So if you go to, where is that now even, find and replace. Fine, yeah, there you go. Edit, find, <laughs> advance and find and replace, there you go. There's a shortcut for this, but I always use the shortcut. Uh, edit, find, replace. Yeah, I already typed it in here, actually. Uh, what you see here are, you know, um, these two four times, right? So this uh, number six, shift six gives you that little, what is it called in English even? The little um, hat. No, before the hash. The hat. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. 
as long as you know where to find it, it it's on my computer is shift uh, six uh, and that, that one is used for a lot of things if you go to uh, special all of these will be like shift uh, p t uh, dollar uh, hash uh, etc right um, you can even just it'll show you you can do any paragraph mark it, it, it'll do it there also in the record from special um, you know l is a line break etc but uh, this one is pretty practical because as academics always write about something being in a, from a certain year right this is published this year you said this in that year so I use this uh, if I highlight all uh, or I, actually I usually don't highlight all but I'll do it now I usually go one by one but it gives you all the basically what it does it gives you all your references right all your citations within an article and occasionally the odd you know like report from 1953 but basically gives you all your references because all your references are on the four digit format so you can easily go through and say okay what do I have here okay I have Ikoja Odongo I have 2004 I have um, Ministry of Education I have Magara Nyumba I have down here I have uh, government of Uganda like it gives you all of these in a very you know in a, what, is, what is the word even like even give, gives in, give, it gives you a good overview of what you have and you can easily search through find next enter um, so that's a pretty strong search function uh, and and you know again you can also go from here uh, format you can also do format like only search for a certain font like uh, let's say you have a huge document and you want to and then suddenly and you have certain se segments are formatted as uh, size 11 right certain are formatted as size 12 and then someone says oh no uh, and some some is made the headlines are maybe for 16 right and you want to change all the 11 to 10 or 12 or whatever you can easily do that here so you saw uh, okay maybe you didn't want to change Cambria maybe you want to change the you know regular italic let's say you want to do 11 or 10 uh, it has to be blank otherwise it doesn't work and then you can replace it with format font you know 12 for instance find next of course it wouldn't work here because I don't have anything but if I did uh, it would work Find next, replace, replace all. Correct. And like I said, imagine if you have, you know, you're working on a dissertation or, you know, big paper, 100 pages, and someone suddenly you realize that, oh, God damn it, it's not supposed to be font 10, it's supposed to be font 11. How do I do that? I have like 100 quotes. One click, you know, uh, replace all, and you're good. Uh, and there are so many other functions of that sort, but you can check it out on yourself, right? And this is going to give you a, a, you know, a sense of some of those options. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> All right, the, the short answer or the easy way is to go here N shift uh, P you know, or uh, O O W S shape save as is that all the time uh, shift command S you know you just have them here in your um, you have them here right uh, table maybe not so many spelling uh, the, the, the although uh, what I basically recommend is just Google it Google shortcuts word shortcuts uh, you know, in any program, and a lot, a lot of these shortcuts are kind of universal, which basically means they're used by 95% of programs or across, or even more. Um, all, so a lot of these are universal, uh, but also quite a few are program specific. Uh, basically, you're if you're really interested, basically just Google it and you know we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, maybe a bit specific.
is this imprecise? This was my Google search. This was my hit for uh, shortcuts word. And it brings me, it gives me some of these. This is just word and it's just too many. Like I'm not gonna use all of these, right? But you can pick out the ones you like. Um, it should, the thing with shortcut is, you know, if you don't use them, you forget them, and that's just as well. If you use them a lot, you remember them, and that's good. Um, and you probably know a lot of these already, you know, Command C, Command V, you know a lot of the basic ones. Uh -uh -uh. Well, you can in 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 Windows, you can do uh, you can do Magara. I have two hits on Magara here, two matches. If it's more than a hundred, they won't show you. They will just show you like many or like it doesn't count that many. Um, in uh, this is within the Word document. If you're talking files, I will get back to that in about five minutes. I need to kind of wrap up a little bit here. Uh, I'll get back to some search functions and we can we can get back to the question of like identifying things within PDFs like you have you know 50 PDFs or 10 or a thousand and you want to you know yeah. work with stuff in in, in those uh, Yeah, but uh, essentially, you know Google it and also it's gonna gr Grow slowly I guess you know start using a few and if they if you don't if they don't stick then you know They're not gonna stick right and then kind of move on uh, But but you learn shortcuts. It's a good be a good piece of advice if you're not if you're using one or two or even using less than 50, I would say kind of you can look at throwing. Uh, you know, there are, you know, uh, I also use like trip, you know, multiple paragraph breaks. Uh, I, another, did I actually delete that slide? What happened to the. Sorry. Um, I think I had a slide also with some other. No, maybe this. Is, anyway, you can also like find mistakes like having space before full stop. You don't, that's not, there's nothing magical there. You just kind of do the search, right? I always search for a uh, double space and it's, there's nothing magical. It's just space, space in the search bar. There should never be a double space in any document ever, period. If you want to have a lot more space, you use tabs. Uh, it's much tidier and, you know, better. Um, all right, uh, moving on. Um, Google Scholar, uh, world's biggest uh, search engine. Or academic search engine. Engine. Uh, so, uh, so a couple of things here. Um, I think the best thing about Google Scholar, actually, a lot of good things. But one really, the, the, the biggest hidden treasure, I guess, is this one. Ooh, but, uh, oh, by. Yeah, and I mean, it's always good to know whether an article is kind of popular or not. I mean, that's nice to know, but it doesn't tell you. You know, that's only so important. But what's good about it is that, uh, like, I was writing this term paper, uh, you know, last term, and I, it was something like, it was something like this: textbook, visual analysis, and I was like, I got the most random things. Like, you search textbook, and you get everything. Everything is a textbook, right? It was just how hopeless. I didn't know what what do I search for. I was like, and I was about to go to the library, and I spoke to some people there, and then you know. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> anyway, I was really struggling. I was like, usually I kind of manage, and you know, we find stuff. Usually find too much, right? But I was like, wasn't finding anything relevant, and then I finally found a, I found a handful of documents, right? So then what I did was I went to cited by, like on on a relevant document, and I found that oh, uh, there are twenty people citing this this document here, you know, like uh, parallel set, interactive exploration, you know, whatever. Right? So I find people citing this one. That was, I mean, also, so if this one is from 19, uh, 2006, then the cited ones will always be newer, also. As opposed to going the other way and looking at the, his references, her references, and finding you know, older articles that you know, he cited, she cited. So you find new people who cite this one, really, really valuable, especially if you're kind of stuck on, or like, I don't know if you find a good article that you're going to see people who have you know, picked up this idea. 
or you're just gonna just need more articles. I need this is a narrow field or whatever. Who, you know who's working in this area and what can, what's out there, right? Uh, cited by. Uh, this you know, you probably might know already. Uh, click here and you get direct link to the article itself. Uh, if it says PDF, uh, you can just download it and it will click and it will download directly. It will also say PDF or a doc or HTML or whatever. Um, you can also uh, if you go to settings, you can uh, you know import into some other format. Um, you click on settings up here in the corner, and you click here, and you can show a link to the import site. I did the uh, you know this one. You can click it. What it does is it uh, allows you to import the metadata for that article. So basically, the author, uh, year, publication, you know the basic stuff, right? It's not 100% accurate. Uh, often, it's notoriously, or it's notorious for leaving out the uh, location of books and stuff. Like, it doesn't give you the, you know, the, anyway. But it's still, it it's a good start. It's usually not wrong. It's usually just missing stuff. Um, so I use that quite a lot. Um, uh, another thing, if you're in Google Scholar, you also have uh, my citations. If you have any publications, you can basically create a profile and you get alerts whenever people cite you. Uh, alerts will do this. You can create an alert, search uh, a query. Uh, of course, you have to use quotation marks if you're searching for an expression. Uh, so this is probably too broad. It will throw too much stuff at, at you. Because this is the whole, this is not the title. Unfortunately, it's like a whole document, like anything in that document. So mm -hmm. anyone talking about this one, that's a lot of stuff coming out there. But if you're in a narrow field or something, or if you have a good enough uh, query, you try it out. Um, rumors, have, rumor, rumors have it that they're taking this down, by the way. Uh, I used it a little bit. Not very, I get a lot of kind of spam like things that are just crap, but Maybe it's okay to get 90% crap if you get 10% you know, that's actually useful. Um, similarly, you can export the uh, accurate citations from a lot of these journal sites, right? Uh, if you have a reference manager. If you don't, it would make sense. Uh, quick thing about uh, Google. Uh, I use this, uh, use this occasionally if I want to check out some you know, expression. Uh, like, if you want to, uh, is it add accordance with or in accordance with, or what is the more common, you know, either correct or more common? Uh, and if you compare these two, a lot of people say, well, they might say add accordance with, it might also be that there might be full stop, there might be a comma, there might be a lot of things. So sometimes you get like things that don't really, you know, I might find some odd things, but basically, two billion, oh, what is it? two billion compared to 100,000 is pretty clear, you know, which is the preferred one. Um, you know, we can also do a conversion, calculator, all kinds of things, find better information. Uh, Google Drive, mention this, um, if you're not using it, or Dropbox, I usually use both because then you get more space and you have more options. Uh, you know, you should probably use it, especially for backup, uh, for backup and text documents, but also other documents. Uh, it's also good for the, the documents. You can also simultaneously collaborate, so you can work on a document at you know at the same time. You know, you start typing, what shall we write about, and then the, the letters will pop up on your friends or all your friends' computers. Right? So you can collaborate that. Um, their files. There's an OCR function there. Not the best one, actually. Anyway, whatever. There's some option for that, but they're probably so you can scan a, a picture or text. And get the get the words out, but there are some limitations there. I I try to give you a good example, and I kind of failed, and I just you know whatever. Mm -hmm. Never have to <laughs> If you really press I, that was 
it's, it's also even just from taking your own your own notes, you know, that's automatically synced back up. Or if you you know, say you're doing something like you go to the library and you just want to write something for ten minutes or one hour or whatever, you can also just write it there. You don't have to worry about saving, emailing it yourself, whatever. You know, it's always just there. Access it anytime, any. Uh, Gmail, most people are using these days. Um, basically, if you don't have a two-step verification system where you protect yourself against hijacking using your phone number, set it up because your life is in your Gmail account. Sad but true. Um, so if you download eBooks, you get a hundred pages at a time. I don't know if you've done this. Uh, uh, I, I wasn't sure, so I was like, well, 10 minutes here. This morning, it, we, I did it at home. It was 30, was it 10 seconds, 30, sec 30 seconds, something like that. Nothing. Uh, but you have to wait a little bit. And uh, I didn't know that at first. So I was like going to my friends, oh, can you log in and download the next 100 pages? Can you do, you know, like I didn't know, right? But then, oh, you just wait, stupid thing. Uh, so you get like, you know, these uh, like bunches or, um, you know, like stacks of 100 pages document. In Preview or Automator or you know any other program, you can merge them into one document. So you have one file. You know, if you're going to hold ebook, right? You, who wants four documents? You want one, right? the whole ebook usually, or maybe just a chapter. But then you can download. It. Looks like this. So you just download, and then you have to choose. You know, a little bit annoyingly, you always get like you know I to you know whatever because they will start with have the the preface and. The, Introduction, all that crap, like all that, that will be like I something so it's a bit more messy. And you try to just do I to 50, that usually works, and then you just pick 51 to 150. Uh, streaming, downloading streaming videos, keepit.org.com. Looks like this, simple enough. There's so many other predecessors, you know, kick YouTube and whatnot, but I think they've just been kicked out. <laughs> The last one, apparently. Zansar, uh, I, used to, I used it a lot in the past, not so much uh, at the moment. Um, it's good for converting files. Uh, like if you have a occasion, especially in the past, I used to get these Word documents uh, by email, and I couldn't open them. You know, whether it was because there was doc doc docx and I didn't have that, or you know, something or other. I don't know what the story of that is. I don't like the docx; it's just annoying. But anyway, you go to Zansar, you upload it, uh, you use the you know, you go here, choose the uh, upload the file, convert it to a PDF or whatever, and email address, and you convert it. Done. Takes a minute or takes a couple of minutes to download it. Ask you to wait, but uh, and then you get it. You can do all kinds of, you know, if you do want to do MP3 to WAV or the other way around, like you know, compress stuff. Uh, you know, all that kind of all that kind of conversion pictures. Like sometimes you have uh, files that don't open because you have some strange format, right? You get like some. FLT and like, oh, what is that? And you have to open it. I mean, there's, you don't have a program to open it, you have to convert it. Happens on and off. Um, last uh, bit now before our break. Uh, organizing files. I always have a file naming convention. Actually, I technically have two, but my let's not <laughs> let's make it this simple. <laughs> uh, this is a more elaborate one. I would just copy and just look, I don't type this for don't think that I'm that, think that I would type everything. Uh, but it's very practical to know which article is which. This is the short uh, version. It's just easy for, you know, it's more com computer readable. And I have to use this one because I'm using a program that requires computer readable or like more, you know, simple uh, ones. Uh, but I also use this one. Uh, I might as well show you because. So I'll just show you here. So uh, here I have a couple of PDFs, right? So let's take this one. If I want to rename this one, I would do like this. I would, uh, it's annoyingly, this has uh, capital letters here. Carmelius' is name. So I copy that, I open it, copy the headline. And this was 1995. Uh, so what I did now was I com I just uh, pasted the I copied it from the PDF, pasted it into the this one. Or now you'll get an error message if you don't stop because annoyingly Max isn't smart enough to understand that when you break here, you don't want to break. If you if I press enter now, it will say it doesn't work. 
So I need to go back and delete the enter sign. Uh, maybe even here. Now it works. It doesn't give me lowercase, which I would prefer. If you're, you know, really meticulous about these things, you can go here, do lowercase, and then go back, right? Yeah. You know, it's maybe it doesn't take a lot of time, but I just feel that it's more. I don't know. I just, I that's what I do. That's what I do. You know, you do whatever you want. Tell me about it. <laughs> That's the thing also, like once when you're working on something, you know, you might kind of have you have an idea of things, but one, you know, you leave it for a few weeks or days sometimes, or like it's just too much. So, uh, yeah, uh, talking a little bit about organizing, now wrapping this stuff up. Um, another little thing I do is uh, to use underscore, so this sign here, to move folders up. Um, in, um, especially uh, in, in, in Windows, folders are by default on top and you sort by name. In Mac, it's not. Uh, but regardless, if you have more folders, you can always use this principle. Force the folder to you know, be on top when you sort by name. Uh, I always still use uh, old, um, I have a folder called old files. Uh, looking at something like this, if you open it, now it's going to open, right? You see that I have all these other. All the documents, all the versions of my term paper, or one, two, three, four, five, I save it quite frequently. Uh, and I just uh, save as, and then save it as an, a higher number. So you always have an older version if I want to go back, if I you know, change something, if I, you know, or as a backup, I don't just feel it's safer. Um, and, uh, and I label the final version, I call it finished. Or sometimes you don't, often you don't even know when it's really finished, right? But, <laughs> Because it's annoying to just have a file that looks like this, and you don't, is that the last one? Is it the almost last one? And you're like, yeah, that's not bad. I'm not good. So I try to stick straight with the finished and try to, if I actually make some changes, I, uh, you know, just try to, you know, keep that right, to keep track of it. Uh, now, uh, searching. This is a pretty, well, this is what we're talking about. This can be fairly powerful. Uh, you know, of course, in, in Windows, you also search, but it works slightly differently. We'd have like a search, you know, bar window. But in in, in Mac, in Mac, it's kind of embedded in the in, the, in this one. So this is in a in a folder called Papers, right? Like I'm in the fold in the folder called Papers. And you know, it always gives you the option to search this Mac, which is basically everything, right? Or this doc, this folder called Papers. So just two. Um, Spotlight will search uh, this Mac. So obviously, if I search, I'm going to search for everything. I use Spotlight. If I want to search a folder, I use this one. Uh, I find it particularly useful if I'm working on a, pa on a, on a paper, and I want to find, let's say, I suddenly, oh, I want to read up on language socialization, or I want to use this, or I want to find, oh, I read about, you know, I'm reading about indigenous uh, education, and I read some article that talked about language socialization. Which one was that one? Or which page or something, right? You can search it here, and you find it in the folder called Papers, where I have all my articles. You find a lot of articles talk about that. Uh, what you can also do, like I have a folder, my folder has about 400 documents or something enormous, 300, I don't know. A lot of files, because I keep all in one. What you can also do is to have a, you know, one folder, I think I have it even here, uh, somewhere. Yeah, articles for searching. I made a particular, let me just blow this one up for you a little bit. So uh, here I have about 100 or something, I don't know, quite a few articles, which are copy pasted into the one, a new folder just for the purpose of searching uh, for a topic. And this is correct now, in indigenous, right? Yeah. And I have to click articles for searching. Quite a few talk about indigenous in, in that particular folder. Socialization, only four articles talk about them. This one, this one, this one, 
uh, or you can, of course, you can just open it and search here, right? Um, yeah, it apparently it's just one, the word is only used once in this particular article. So anyway, um, search function can be, I didn't use it in the past very much, but I kind of realized that it can be powerful to search within the body of articles either your entire collection or a, a limited selection. Uh, sometimes you just you just want those from this topic. You know, you're working on something specific and you don't want everything, you just want this these 20 articles that you're working on. Yes, this is a finder. Yes. So, and this is where I keep all my uh, journal articles. That's, uh, And thus concludes our first um